We're happy little Aussies and we've lots of wealthy mates. The money they've invested here puts food upon our plates. They're mining in the temperate and in the torrid zone. Because we can't be trusted to do it on our own. On ABC Radio National, this is Verbatim. I'm Nick Frankly. This week, singing history, living history. A very personal view of what makes Australia tick through the life and music of Bill Berry. And lots of expertise. And send across the CIA to keep us on our knees. The past never goes away anyway. It, uh, the past is, seems to be still there, you know, the way I find it. And what, what we've got in the present is part of the products of the past. And he's too rich and clever to be talking through his hat. Thanks to the Japs, it's lovely being friends. They might have once been thoughtless, but since then they've made amends. The past is ancient history, don't go opening up all sores. For mining and investment is easier than wars. The Holden's in the garage and... We'd have sessions, we would sing American folk songs for sure, like there's some good ones too, and some English ones. But uh, we weren't going to go one step further and say that there's no such thing as an Australian folk song and that, uh, and if there was, they weren't worth singing. We now present the first episode of Dad and Dave. Well, when I could hardly talk, Mum says, I could just about, only just talk, or two, I had a radio and I heard some song on the radio and then the next thing, that Mum heard me singing it, word for word, tune perfect, everything, she said she nearly fell over backwards. <laughs> so I had a natural ear that didn't require uh, reading music and I still can't read music at any speed today or need to because if I hear a, a bit of music or a tune I can I can uh, remember it. Do you remember any of those songs you were singing then? Oh yes, uh, one was uh, Away in a Manger, I remember that, and uh, Nine Mile from Gundagai, which I used to pronounce Gundagai at that time. And <laughs> <laughs> because I was so small. Now 70 years old, Bill Berry's still singing Nine Miles from Gundagai, relishing the words and the way they reflect a very Australian experience, often missing in the safe emptiness of lift music and shopping mall pap. And the dogs shed in the tucker box Nine miles from Gundagai After I left school, I uh, I went down to Sydney because uh, to get some work, and I joined New Theatre and did uh, did a bit of acting and uh, in some of their workshop productions and one main production and uh, and then uh, joined a group called Unity Singers. John Meredith, you heard of John Meredith? He yeah. He's one of my friends who got the Order of Australia. He's passed away now. He got uh, emphysema. But, uh, he was in it and Chris Kempster was in it. And, uh, and there was a lady called Dee Jacobs, who's uh, Diane Bridges now. She married a bloke called Bridges who was great at conducting. And she really knocked us into shape with a a lot of these Australian folk tunes and things which John Meredith collected beforehand and other people to put into choir and get it out to people. 
And that was in the time when they said, no, there's no such thing as an Australian folk song. But we were doing it uh, at that time when people said that. When I think about it, the uh, all the stuff we did was Australian stuff, like uh, Morton Bay and songs like that. The Ballad of Ned Kelly, which the tune... The whole song was written by John Manifold, who's, who's another friend of mine who died. How did uh, he, he got the Order of Australia before he died. He says he got quite a shock that the Hawke government gave him the Order of Australia. He couldn't figure it out. But <laughs> <laughs> the Australian folk song revival took off in the early 50s. When Bill Berry joined the Unity Singers in Sydney, the choir was then under the charismatic leadership of Doreen Jacobs. Uh, one of the ones that Doreen Jacobs wrote, and that was uh, included in uh, Reedy River, 1891, the Shearer Strike. You heard about that one? I have, yeah. Yeah, and she wrote that one. Uh, they formed the Sydney Bush Music Club too, which... Uh, I used to go to on a Friday night and uh, and some of the stuff John Meredith had collected from people who'd been around in the old days and the songs, uh, they used to learn them. Can, can you, um, would you be able to sing one now from an example of that sort of song? Mm, I could try. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, one of them was written by Duke Tritton, an old bushman who wrote the book called Time Means Tucker, about tramping around and cheering and making uh, your way through life as best you could. Uh, Duke Tritton, I told you, didn't I? But it, uh, there's so much detail and story in that, you feel that the person who wrote it must have known a lot about shearing or talked to a lot of shearers. Well, he did know. He did the shearing, Duke Tritton. He was a, a, a strong, tough man. You know, he used to come down to the uh, Bush Music Club on a Friday night every time, and he'd sing Guri Anawa. And cheering in a bar, which I never learned. But, uh... It must be one of the few that Bill didn't learn, because although he has little memory for historical dates, the tunes seem to always stick. Raise thoughts when morning work bells chime. Praise thoughts for scraps of overtime. Praise Bosses' bloody wars we fight 
praise boss badly chan parasite ah shit some of the traditions like the industrial workers of the world uh was international some come from america a few of the songs i sang were woody guthrie songs and uh it was uh wrote about the Dust Bowl in America and uh, I'd been singing those for years and uh, I found I, I never I found out that there was a Dust Bowl in Australia too but uh, I haven't heard any songs about that one. If you ever want to rise in pay all you gotta do is go and ask the boss for it and he will give it to you and he will give it to you, me boys. And he will give it to you. A rise in pay without delay. He will give it to you. Oh, put it on the ground. Spread it all around and dig it with a hoe. It'll make your garden grow. For the men who own the industry. So there's always been a good tradition of taking the mickey as well, hasn't there? Yes. I mean, that, when they you put it on the ground, it was very popular around trade union circles early in the peace around Sydney, where I used to go places. And people, after a few beers, if someone would get up and sing that song and everyone would join in the chorus. <laughs> Yes, I remember that. Put it on the ground, spread it all around and dig it with a hoe. It'll make your garden grow. Oh, it's good to work. Well, what do you mean put in the car? Well, let him go, otherwise he's under arrest now. The folk revival of the 50s was to blend into many of the protest movements of the 60s. It was uh, August the 16th, Thursday, August the 16th, 1962, where we converged on uh, Parliament House, Canberra, as a nationwide uh, protest against the testing of atomic bombs. Wanting, we wanted the bombs to be banned, so we uh, sent delegations down to see all the uh, diplomats from different countries and places, and and the government. I remember when we, uh, we we got outside of Parliament House, we were in a big crowd there and someone says, oh, I saw Bob Menzies look round the corner of one of the uh, the doorway there and then he disappeared, but that's all we heard of him. <laughs> you actually went down from Brisbane, didn't you? Can you tell us about that, the bus journey? Oh, yes. I uh, uh, sang songs before we went and on the way there in the bus, I had a, a little speaker system in the bus, a friend of mine, Brian Crawford, he's, he's, he's since died of asbestosis because he worked in an asbestos factory, but that's another story. But uh, we were singing together and we got the whole bus singing and, uh, and by the time we got to Canberra, everybody joined in a big chorus singing peace songs. And, uh, <laughs> And they said that the Queensland delegation distinguished themselves because they were all singing. <laughs> Men and women stand together. Do not heed those men of war. Make your mind up now or never. Ban the bomb forevermore. Will you lay the world in ruin only you can make the choice only think of what you're doing join the march and raise your voice time is short we must be speedy we can see the hungry fill house the homeless Help the needy, shall we blast or shall we build? Men and women stand together, do 
Do not heed those men of war Make your mind up now or never Ban the bomb forevermore the, the sheer horror of it, you know, the, uh, the being wiping, wiping out millions of people. People didn't want uh, atomic war to break out because it had badly polluted the planet and it had caused mutations in children and other people. And people were very worried about that. There's someone up there watching over me The signs are there and plain for all to see He's never far away but I'm reminded every day There's someone up there watching over me Everywhere people went to protest there'd be these uh, security police had come along <laughs> and sometimes they'd search people's houses and things like that either with or without their knowledge but, uh, I'm too Is sure this what special you do that in uh, eh? Was that the special branch? No, that was just Asia they, they used to yeah, just, uh, well, people that they these days they, they give give them the tag of spooks they call, call them <laughs> Plain for all to see He's never far away But I'm reminded every day There's someone up there watching over me Got a letter from the post While Bill Berry's always been attracted to humour in music From the bawdy to the satirical He's often also shining a light on the darker side of Australian history. The song Whitnoom Gorge, dedicated to his friend Brian Crawford, tells a history of asbestos mining that, not surprisingly, never quite made it into the corporate brochures. A lady called Lorna Fisher wrote the words and Don Henderson put it to a tune and it's called Australian Blue Asbestos. And I'll sing it for you. Like a friend of mine died of asbestosis. It's one of the worst deaths you can get of him, as far as pain goes, apparently. And uh, he worked in an asbestos factory. And it's, a, it's the known thing that the people that owned the factories denied that it caused that, that uh, which is, seems to be a usual type of thing to happen. But... we'd make if we went to Widdenham and how badly they needed more miners up there they take us all up and advance us the fair no need to take a thing for the house was supplied and they showed us the photo but the camera had lied the sun shining hot on the desert today <clears throat> It's breaking my heart And baking the clay It's a long time before That hot sun will set Gives us time to remember And a lot to forget well, the short photo that they showed us of the house where we'd lived, they neglected to say it was for executives and the money was good, but the company store with their black market prices, they're keeping us poor and we're digging asbestos from hot rocky ground and we're living in huts in the company town the sun shining on on the desert today is breaking my heart 
and bake in the clay. It's a long time before <coughs> that hot sun will set. Gives us time to remember and a lot to forget. Australian blue asbestos, don't you ever forget. Whatever you give is as good as you get. And remember, though the memory may be hard, the miner is a man, not a number on a card. When the people on this land you may trust, we'll remember you, though you don't remember us. We'll remember you, we'll remember you, we'll remember you, we'll remember you. It's obviously very important to you that a lot of your songs are about Australia and being Australian. Yes, it's... Uh as far as I'm concerned, if a person's an Australian, they're an Australian, and uh, they're not uh, British, and they're not American, they're not anything else either. It, that, that they're Australian, and, uh, and I've always lived here, and I always felt I'm an Australian above everything else, you know, and uh, I, I like to be able to feel. Uh, proud about it too, that there's a lot of things that need cleaning up first. <laughs> Sad story I'll tell if you listen to me, about two men who could never agree, what one said was white, the other call black, and they'd argue a while and then step out the back, and it's on. All reason and logic are gone Winning the fight won't prove that you're right It's sad, it's true, but it's on Oh, my name's Bill Berry. I was born in February the 20th, 1934 and I've been singing songs as long as I could talk and, uh, and I'm still singing them. They'd been fighting so long that could neither recall What in the first place had started it all Still they were at it day in and day out They were fighting to see what they were fighting about And it's on There won't be any time at all uh, be without song until, until the day I die, I don't think <laughs> There'll always be a song there. True, but it's on. Oh, how would it be if teachers in schools came to agreement by Queensbury's rules? Could easily be argued the square root of four was sixteen less three plus a smack in the jaw, and it's this on. week's verbatim singing history featured the life and music of Bill Berry. Special thanks to Mark Gregory, who recorded many of the songs featured in this program in Bill's Kitchen. Sound engineering by David Bates. I'm Nick Franklin. Coming up next on Radio National, Street Stories. West government think that it makes better sense To save on education and spend on defence should easily be argued on the same grounds that election should be held the best of ten rounds and it's on all reason and logic are gone winning the fight won't prove that you're right it's sad it's true but it's on